Welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is radiology workflow and what are some of the solutions that are becoming available to help radiologists deal with the growing volume of medical imaging studies. We've got with us a couple experts in the field, Matt uh, Lundgren. He is chief medical information officer at Nuance Communications, as well as uh, Callum Cunningham. He is senior vice president and general manager of the diagnostic imaging business at Nuance. Nuance. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us today. No, thank you, Brian. Great to thanks, be here. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Now, if, uh, if you could both give us just some quick introductions and then we'll get into the show. Uh, Matt, would you like to start? Sure, absolutely. Again, thanks for having us here. Um, so I'm Matt Lundgren, as, as you said, Brian, and uh, I'm the, currently the Chief Medical Information Officer. My background is I'm a, an interventional radiologist um, and formerly a AI researcher. And uh, I'm really focused on bringing cutting edge technologies into, into the workflow. Great. Uh, Callum, how about you? Yeah, so Brian, I, I um, actually joined um, uh, Microsoft Nuance in May of last year uh, to lead the diagnostics business and was really delighted actually to have the opportunity to do that because several reasons, I guess. They have an amazing product, um, very strong core technology base and a very unique market footprint, as well as a, a compelling go forward strategy. So the thing that you know I'm bringing to the mix here is just experience when it comes to building and scaling global enterprise cloud software businesses. Um, I've done that across multiple different segments, education technology, FinTech, and, and then of course, most recently with Toshiba Medical and Philips, the health tech sector. So really looking forward to uh, today's discussion. Cool. All right. Well, let's get to it. So anybody that's that's been in radiology uh, for the last year or so has realized that that workflow is a is a huge challenge for people. And you know, we've got these great scanners that are that are creating all these amazing images, but the problem is, you know, how do you integrate that into workflow? And then you've got AI coming in. How do you work with that? What are you guys hearing from your customers about what some of these challenges are, Callum? Mm. So, you know, Brian, when, when I talk to radiologists today in the context of workflow, to be honest with you, it often starts with frustration at their experience and specifically about how the products that are part of their broader workspace environment fail to work well together and about how it impacts their ability to deliver the best possible patient quality and at the same time get through their day without being completely exhausted. You know, we make it hard for them. And you know, I think when you stand back and actually just observe radiologists and the radiology reading process as it is today, it's easy to understand why they are just that frustrated. You know, if you put it really simply, we're asking radiologists to operate as a kind of, let me call it a human connective tissue mm. between very disjointed data systems. And specifically, if you think about the patient information system, the pixel data system, the reporting system, we ask them to physically look up the patient information from the patient record, to physically look at the patient's images, take measurements, then pick up a microphone and dictate what they've seen and measured so that it can then be entered into the reporting data system on its way back to the patient information system. So that's, you know, that's that, that we, we could be doing, we could be serving them much better than that. Mm. Matt, is that kind of your perspective as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this is exactly what, you know, we've kind of, I guess, in, in some ways thought of as, as the, the normal. And I and I think that increasingly we recognize that there's multiple aspects of the work that we do um, that is either cumbersome because, again, the multiple sort of inter, inter, interfaces that we're dealing with, or potentially we're doing things repetitively uh, that we recognize you don't need to be uh, an MD with, you know, 15 years of, of training to, to, to do. Right. And I think, you know, we've, we've Callum pointed out a few of those. And I think that, you know, that's kind of where I think the expectation is now that there are technology, technologic solutions to address some of those pain points. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think we've been laser focused on and AI is of course, one of those tools, but in general, being able to, you know, deal with that last mile integration, the interoperability piece, and really try to get 
uh, to the point where the you know this the experience for the radiologist is as seamless as humanly possible. Mm, that makes sense. Now, now, how how much of a problem is the siloed nature of radiology? The fact that technology, you know, we've got all this great technology out there, but a lot of times it it's not working together with uh, the other pieces as well. Yeah, I think you know the data silo problem actually cuts across all the way from the sort of the, the core data science aspect of things, right? Where, where I live a lot of my time and it's been, is, is sort of thinking about how do we get the data to be interoperable? How do we make it seamless? Because we recognize that while imaging provides a lot of value and a lot of information about a, you know, a patient or a clinical case, it's not the whole story, right? And, and if we continue to operate in a silo, and again, just from the data science or AI perspective, we're, we're over-indexing almost on, uh, on the single exam or the single data point. But as humans, right, as, as experts in the field, again, we're we're looking at different sources of input. We're looking at the clinical context. We're looking at, you know, the prior imaging. We're making recommendations to the clinician. That, like, our work is not in a silo, but yet we're sort of forced to kind of operate in that. And I think that that's one of the things that we're really excited about addressing. I think that one of the things that, you know, being a part of Microsoft in particular now is thinking about, well, you know, these problems didn't just, don't just happen in healthcare, right? These are these data silo challenges and uh, happen in all kinds of verticals. And so we can sort of take some of those learnings uh, from, from the platform perspective, from the enterprise perspective. And I think, and we can apply them to uh, the tools and solutions that we're providing to customers now. So I, I'm very, I'm very hopeful that, you know, we're, we're getting into a space with, you know, this new partnership in particular we're we're going to be able to unlock a lot of that, you know, that feeling that you're kind of in your own lane and you're not able to to cross over very easily, particularly when it comes to data, but then also in the clinical workflow. Mm. Callum, do you do you are you hopeful as well that we can break down some of these silos with the technology we've got? You know, absolutely. Look, with the emerging technologies that are available as to available to us today, the specialist AI, the limitless compute opportunities that are offered by the cloud and and in particular, you know, some of the recent developments with large foundation models, we have all of the capabilities that we need to create a human computer environment where we let technology do the data gathering and the connectivity work so that the radiologist can actually focus more completely on the context of the patient that's in front of them. It, you, you know, within Microsoft Nuance, we call that kind of joined up workflow and ambient workflow experience. And that's very much where we're focusing right now. Mm. What are some practical ways where you you see radiology and the continuum of care becoming more interconnected by AI in the cloud? So um, I think there's a you know number of ways you could address that. Um, so I think about it maybe on on three kind of vectors. So the first is you know we can do more to really automate the things that radiologists can't stand, right? That boring and mundane work that we've already spoken about in the context of needing to provide a much more ambient workflow experience. I think, um, you know, a second area is really where we can use AI, for example, to surface those things that radiologists can't immediately see. And one obvious example of this is, let's say our radiology work list solution that, you know, can, can operate across a hugely complex provider ecosystem connecting literally hundreds of radiologists, but at the same time ensuring that in a, you know, an emergency situation that the right patient's getting to the right radiologist with the right information at the right time. But we're also looking at more subtle ways of addressing those things that radiologists maybe can't immediately see. So for example, by helping to identify similar exams, findings or patients, um, and, and, and so on to really assist with the interpretation of, let's say, rare or unusual cases. And then, you know, the last, and I, I suppose, again, you know, you know, very clear and obvious example is that we're absolutely driven by wanting to help radiologists surface what they cannot easily see. And that means providing a platform for speciality algorithms that can detect, measure and trend those subtle findings that you know they're often so hard to physically detect, and so our you know solution for that is our integrated data platform for imaging AI, a thing that we call PIN, the Precision Imaging Network. Mm. Now, Matt, what do you see as Nuance's role in solving this this workflow workflow problem? All the different technologies that Nuance has got. Yeah, it's a great question. I think this this comes up a lot, and especially again coming from both worlds, the science world and the and the the, the clinical world. 
uh, it's not hard. I think if anyone in the audience is kind of also kind of bridging those worlds, you you see all these incredible advancements, all this amazing work that, and it's accelerating, right? In in and I sort of think of this as the uh, the there's a conference called NeurIPS, a very famous AI conference, and then there's RSNA, and you can kind of see how there's this you know increasing accelerating opportunity and capability on the one side in the in the science side. And then I I still go into my you know my clinical practice, and I'm like I, I'm feeling that gap where I go to RSNA and I'm like it, there there's there seems to be a disjointed sort of feeling there right I know what maybe could be possible but yet I'm not living in that future, and I think that that's where this you know these two companies coming together really tells that story well what we're trying to do is really take the best of both groups so there's this massive opportunity in the development space to build these build these solutions, whether it's AI or other things, just even if you're just talking about analytics, but build them. But then rather than have them stack up, you know, in a in sort of a you know an academic conference, now there's this opportunity to deploy. So bridging that development to deployment gap to us is I think easy for anyone to see how the strengths of both companies come into play. Because again, nuance has lived in this what we what we all recognize as a heterogeneous infrastructure in health IT. Yeah. across the globe. And in particular in the US, the, the challenges of bringing things into clinic, I don't have to tell anyone in this group how, how difficult that can be. But now you have a core solution that has been integrated with multiple different systems for a long time. And, and now if you can attach in some of the, again, that that development capability, some of the, the, the power of, again, the scalability, the cloud, some of the opportunities to rapidly update and, and increase the capabilities of the solutions that you're already seeing integrated into practice. I think that starts to tell a story where that that big, you know, that big difference that we're starting to see, you can bridge that. And yeah. that I think that that's what I'm singularly personally focused on. And and I think as a company, we're all looking at ways to say, how can we accelerate that development to deployment gap? Well, I was, I was just going to say, Matt, do, do you see that process accelerating? Do you think, do you see technologies getting out of the lab and, and out of, you know, the, the presentation room at RSNA and, and into the radiology department more quickly now? I do. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have this concept called the AI factory, right? Which we, which we recently talked about quite a bit, which is this literally connecting the ID, the integrated development environment to the runtime environment, in this case, pin or or you know the nuance portfolio and and because we can connect the two uh we can see that acceleration now speaking to those who are developing ai a big frustration is that they've again they've developed all this maybe they had a paper at rsna how do they get real world evidence for the solution how do they show that their solution truly can do what they have found in the lab can it can do with real world data well that's a big that's a big challenge right and so we've really tried to uh, make that a seamless experience already. In fact, uh, you may have seen our uh, a partnership that we made with the NVIDIA group uh, late last year. It was announced before RSNA, where folks that are using these packages to build these cutting edge solutions now can connect them directly into the clinical workflow with something like PIN. Now, that may not mean that it's clinically turned on and it's used in, you know, for patients. Clearly, that's another step. But it's at least closing the gap in the sense that they're just getting feedback as to the value and the capabilities of the systems that we're building so that we can start making decisions as to what is ready for prime time. Yeah. And we can make that decision a lot quicker. Great. Now, now Cal Callum, what? Yeah, go ahead, Callum. Yeah, I was actually, I was just going to you know, build, build on what Matt, Matt was talking about there, if I can, for a second, Brian, because I think, yeah. look, in a very practical sense, right, one way that we tie the development work done in the AI factory to the customers with our AI platform PIN and actually with PIN, we make it easy for customers to implement an end-to-end -end AI deployment strategy because we take all the business complexity out of, say, selecting and qualifying third-party AI vendors, not just for radiology, but also for other speciality precision, uh, for other speciality physicians, and also to support multiple different kinds of care pathways. But we also make it easy for the AI providers, right, to onboard and stage their algorithms. And we make practical things like mm, consolidating contracting, pricing, and metering easy for the customer. We connect, we distribute the algorithms to the right workflow spots in the runtime environment. And then, of course, we can monitor and report back on which algorithms are being selected, 
frequency of selection and whether or not the insights that they're generating uh, are actually being actioned. So precision, precision imaging network or PIN is, would you call it kind of an ecosystem that you guys manage where you can bring in AI algorithms from, from multiple different uh, developers so, and push those out to your consumers and they can use the ones that they, they choose to? Exactly that, exactly that. And then we go that one step further, of course, we're actually monitoring that usage and feeding back information about the quality of those algorithms, both to the pro algorithm provider and, of course, to the you know the, the healthcare provider. So you might uh, could you conceivably have two algorithms for a similar yes. application, and then you could you could say, well, you know, hey, company A, they use your algorithm more than company B. Well, the data will say that. Right? The data will so say that. Yeah, the yeah. algorithm is being selected more often in one context, say for example, versus another context. Then, then you know that kind of data is useful both both to the the uh, obviously the care provider, but also to the algorithm provider too. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Now, now Matt, is that uh, usage something that you, that you're seeing useful with your customer base? Yeah, I mean, we we've actually spend quite a bit of time. I mean, we again, this is that idea of looking across the aisle and saying, you know, for 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 other verticals who are maybe more mature in that AI adoption, AI use space, what are the best practices? And I think if you talk to anyone in that in any other vertical who's, who's regularly using AI, whether they're developing their own or they're using third party, what they're telling you is that they, when they deploy them, there needs to be an opportunity to monitor that over time, right? And that technology, I think to date is still not super mature in the medical imaging space. And we've actually taken the steps, um, we've even open sourced this, this work, uh, which is to make it available so that you can actually track the potential change in your model's performance on a given data set over time. And, and so, and you might say, well, that's, that's okay when there's, you know, one or two, we can maybe handle that even human feedback, we can keep an eye on it. But now imagine fast forward a few years, right? We have 300 FDA cleared solutions today, how many will there be in a couple of years? Well, it's going to be very difficult to keep track of all of those across, you know, all those different use cases. And so we see solutions like this again, tying in the integration component that Nuance does so well with the analytics, the dashboards, and the monitoring capabilities that the broader Microsoft ecosystem services all of these other customers with. Those things together to me, just it really helps us build this ecosystem that's seamless, but also again, allows folks to say, hey, I think there might be a change in my protocol, or I bought a new GE scanner, I bought a new statement scanner, whatever that decision is on the clinical side, how will that impact the model? We can actually anticipate that or see that happen and make it make an adjustment if necessary, right? So that's, I think that's the key thing. It's it's really going back to the core science of the generalizability of these models, but also taking some of those best practices uh, from others who would use AI regularly. Mm, that's awesome. Now, one of the, the the hottest headlines in AI in the last few months has been uh, Chat GPT uh, and and more broadly generative AI. What sort of applications in radiology do you see that? Do you see that having, if any, Callum? Do you want to tackle that one? Um, you, you know, I could. Let me let me let Matt take a tilt at that for us, because I, I know Matt, you're close to a lot of the work that's actually going on. <laughs> you know that I live and breathe GPT. Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so um, it's a great question, and clearly, it's on everyone's mind. And actually, uh, at, the, at least at the time of this recording, uh, GPT four was announced. Um, and again, because of this close relationship, both between Microsoft and OpenAI, but also with Nuance, we have the opportunity to, to critically think about how these kinds of technologies can accelerate use cases for clinicians in products that we, they already use every day. And so even if you say, well, hey, no, I've, I've noticed that the, a lot of these large language models are by definition language based, they're text based. Well, it turns out there's a lot of things we do. Uh, in our day-to-day -day work that involve text. And some of those things, there may be opportunities to, again, to leverage these new technologies to, to increase productivity, to increase or decrease the number of errors that we potentially could see, and really just drive a, a future where um, we're able to take advantage of these new technologies as they come off the line, right? We're not having to wait. We're not having to try to figure out how to form a, a strategic partnership with a, with a company that's developing one of these you know, cutting edge models. We have that relationship. And I think we uh, have a great opportunity to then see those things work in in the workflow for our clinical uh, customers. Awesome, uh, Callum. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think I think um, 
you know, clearly, clearly it's a hot topic, right? And clearly there's a lot of hype. I think you know, one of the things that Matt and I talk um, a lot about, Matt, myself and others across, um, you know, both Microsoft and Nuance is just that notion of responsible AI. And, you know, we, you know, many of us have, <laughs> you all have read about, you know, some of the different, um, let me say, unfortunate characteristics of, you know, some of these models. And so a lot, you know, when we think about them and we think about their deployment, you know, we love the opportunity and the promise uh, that they represent, but we're super conscious of the context within which they would be deployed. And so um, we, we give a great deal of thought to how they will actually actually show up in, 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 in products and, and, you know, create true clinical value as well as, you know, as well as novelty value, let me see. Mm, definitely. All right. Well, um, if I'd uh, like to draw the, the show to a close, I um, would like to give both of you a chance to kind of get a crystal ball out and, and maybe take a look at where you see uh, technology and radiology workflow sort of uh, intersecting in the in the next couple of years. Matt, um, what do you see happening and are you optimistic that, that uh, technology companies like Nuance are going to be able to help radiologists get a handle on this workflow issue? You know, to be honest, I've never been more optimistic. Um, it's one of the reasons I, you know, made some of these even personal career decisions, right, to really try to help be a part of this and drive drive what we're starting to see as technology becomes increasingly um, important, I think, for, for addressing a lot of the pain points that we talked about at the beginning of the discussion. I also see as, you know, on a broader sense, this, this general migration from thinking about things at an individual level. We talked about silos today, but really maybe instead thinking about it from an enterprise level. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I think that, you know, as both from an academic perspective and from a clinical perspective, the future is what we would call multimodal. It's not, again, these individual use cases. And so the best way to drive that, I think, is to have, you know, a, a partner with a platform that can, that can provide that interoperability and drive that into, into product. And I think, again, that as Callum said earlier, Doing that responsibly and doing it in a way that also serves value to the customer, I think, is something that you know we we definitely bring from the nuance side. And um, again, the combination to me, um, the future is bright. Great, uh, Callum, are you optimistic? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we've talked today about some of the challenges facing radiology as it stands today, but you know, we've also touched here upon some of just the incredible opportunities that are on the horizon. I think you know, for us as an organization, for me as a you know as a business leader, the, the the challenge is still about leveraging our technology leadership, our clinical depth, to improve patient outcomes, improve the physician and patient experience, and drive down cost. The tools at our disposal, they're definitely evolving and improving, but what needs to remain constant for us is our focus and our determination to make things better. Great. Well, those are great parting words. Um, some great discussion today. I'd like to thank, thank uh, Matt and Callum for being with us. Uh, gentlemen, thanks so much. Also, thanks to our audience for joining us. And uh, be sure to check out Nuance Technologies on their website. Matt and Callum, thanks again. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. All right. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey. <laughs>